Yeah, I would like to talk about a proposal that is actually uh, at least one year old. Uh, the first time I heard about it uh, was at DEF CON 4. And it's about uh, yeah, replacing, well not replacing actually, including more precompiles written in, in WASM. So what is a precompile? Well, it's a, some kind of specific contract that is present in every client. And if you, uh, it's like if you uh, run your regular contract and you want to perform a task that is a bit uh, both repetitive and needs to be performed a, a bit faster than the usual uh, execution of, uh, of an interpreter, you jump uh, from your uh, from your contract into this specific contract written in native code, and then you return and uh, and you continue uh, as if uh, as if you had never left uh, the, the EDM environment. Uh, so there are uh, four main oops, sorry, four main goals about this uh, about this proposal. Uh, three of them are uh, ETH one related. The last one is uh, is ETH two related. Um, the, the first one of them is uh, to speed up feature adoption. So when people want to add more features, it's, uh, it's the problem of every open source project, probably even uh, other than open source project. Everybody wants to offload maintenance of their code to uh, the open source community. It happens in the Linux kernel, it happens uh, everywhere. Um, so you want to you do that, uh, but of course there's a lot of pushback because the client maintainers are the ones who will have to do the work. If something goes wrong, they are the ones staying up late to try to fix, uh, to fix the, the problems. Um, so there's uh, some kind of push, pushback, and that's, that's pretty healthy, actually. Uh, what you want to do is uh, make this, uh, like try to uh, go against this, uh, this phenomenon by uh, making sure that when you create a new feature, you provide one template that will be uh, yeah, that you just drop into your your client. You don't have to rewrite it in every single language. Uh, so um, that's the, what the write once, uh, run everywhere um, joke was about. You you heard that before, of sure, uh, of course, I'm sure. Um, it doesn't work as well as in the marketing campaign, but uh, it's still uh, it's still pretty uh, useful if you can get closer to that. Um, yeah, so the, the goal is uh, to reduce the, the, the work for client maintainers because if you have one bug, it's in the uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, program, you can fix it uh, once and for all, so it's everybody's uh, participating, it's not like you have to fix it on every client, uh, so hopefully it's, it's going to help with that. Uh, the state growth is the biggest problem in Ethereum at the moment, uh, like uh, the last test I made uh, I found that the state was uh, 15 gigabytes, um, and that's not including all the overhead to access the data. It's just the, the pure state. You have uh, big winners like uh, like uh, the gas token, the crypto kitties. They're they're huge, um, and uh, that already you can't. You know, if one contract is over 800 megabytes, you can't store that on a mobile phone. So that means already half the half the people on this planet are cut off from uh, you know, running a, a node. That's a problem if you want uh, this, uh, this uh, community and this ecosystem to be accessible to everybody and you want everybody to be able to validate. So uh, the, the end goal of this approach is to help with moving as much state as possible out of the chain itself. Just save enough that you can uh, keep the guarantees of blockchain, all the safe, uh, the safe aspects of blockchain, without getting the, the big problem of, uh, of having to sync a, a huge uh, amount of data. Uh, so this, uh, yeah, there's also the question of gas cost. If you have a very uh, complex operation, so actually uh, I'm not really happy all of a sudden with uh, the fact that I chose S-Store, because S-Store is not a big problem. But um, you, you have one instruction in EVM that is fairly uh, that is, looks simple when you compile the, the program, but actually behind it you have a lot of execution. So the, the gas cost that has been chosen for uh, S-Store is somewhat arbitrary. Uh, and the idea is that if you manage to keep, uh, to break it down into some instructions that are lower level, that are cl a closer match to what is actually executed, you can meter this, uh, this contract, uh, well, this, this new piece of code, and hopefully it will be uh, more accurate. And the last, uh, the last bigger, the last uh, yeah, uh, step is indeed to to make it look a bit more like uh, ETH2. 
Um, so in E2, it's a lot about uh, like the, a lot of the execution environment stuff in E2 is about getting. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's like client based, so you only store uh, the root of an execution environment, what's called an execution environment, on um, on the chain, um, and the rest is all uh, done offline. Well, sorry, off chain, not offline. Um, there's one plan to to take ETH one and to bring it into uh, one of the shards uh, in ETH two. So um, so the less data you have at some point, like when you fork. You want to manage as little data as possible, so this transition would, would really uh, be uh, much easier if uh, the size of the data was, was reduced. Uh, so the requirements to to perform uh, this change, this switch, would be to uh, have a Wasm interpreter in, in each client. It's actually not that hard. Uh, Wasm has been uh, pretty uh, trendy recently, so everybody wrote they're uh, uh, like an interpreter for their own language. There's, uh, there's actually multiple in Go, there's at least one in Rust, <coughs> there's one in C++, of course. Um, so you could do this. Um, you, you could just, just include it in, into your client. And <coughs> then you're done, almost. Uh, there's, of course, a lot of um, details, like the devil is in the details. So there's, uh, there are a couple challenges um, that I want to address, like uh, at least a couple questions. Uh, one of them is, is, is that going to be slow if you're going to use precompiles? Uh, so if, you use, if you're going to use Wasm for precompiles? Um, so yeah, the, there's no question we don't want to replace current precompiles that are currently written in the native language of each client with, with Wasm, that, that wouldn't make any sense. Um, there's uh, no, nothing prevents you from rewriting the code once the precompile has been accepted, you can perfectly rewrite it into your own client's language. Uh, but the, the advantage here is that, uh, first, you can include it immediately, so it will run. Uh, and then you can take your time to, to rewrite and include it. And then, um, you also have a reference to compare it to, so you can fuzz your implementation against the WASM or the WASM precompile and, uh, and see if everything you did was, was correct. Um, as it turns out, interpreter performance is not so bad, so there was a, a talk about this uh, yesterday, uh, that he was on team, uh, uh, yeah, we, we talked about it, so if, you, uh, if you're interested, you should, uh, you should check the, the, the video for that. And uh, yeah, there are plenty of tricks that we can still use to improve performance, so you can use, uh, you can compile the WASM, uh, it's actually not going to provide so much of an improvement uh, after all. But uh, you can also use uh, what's called the host function. So you, you have your WASM interpretation, but you call into a, a native implementation. One of the things that is slowing down execution is the, how uh, U256 are implemented. So you could uh, provide a series of host functions that uh, are implemented natively. And there's a proposal by, uh, by Paul from the WASM team that, uh, to write some kind of uh, assembly register, so you write some indication of how the, the compiler should compile your code and uh, so that it produce, uh, produces an output that, that makes sense in, in your context. Um, yeah, so the, the other risk uh, is the pre-compile explosion. Uh, like, I, like I was saying at the beginning, you have uh, a lot of people that just want to offload their, uh, their code to, to the community to keep uh, to have the community maintain it happens everywhere it happens in Linux kernel um, and uh, yeah thankfully there's a lot of uh, healthy pushback from the client maintainers um, because we don't want to uh, yeah uh, we want to make sure that uh, the thing is actually useful uh, and so there's uh, a couple I, at least I proposed a couple of ac ac acceptance criteria that are just common sense really. Uh, if you want a precompile to be uh, to be added to the list of uh, precompiles, well, you have to provide tests, obviously. Uh, you have to demonstrate a willingness to keep maintaining the, the precompile once it's integrated, because uh, once again, we don't want to be the only ones uh, staying up going to fix uh, to fix your problem. And uh, and there's the last uh, yeah the last two uh, things are, are a bit more um, um, yeah imprecise, but uh, they yeah. Like the focus would be to, like I said, uh, focus on uh, on state management. Like we don't want to pre-compile for everything. Uh, it, it would be uh, with a focus on taking as much data off-chain as possible. 
Um, and of course, it's not about just getting your code. Uh, well, well, we have to understand that when, um, when you have a pickle pile running, usually the gas cost uh, is going to be cheaper than if you were actually running it, uh, like running the EVM version of it. So effectively, the network is subsidizing the, the, the pickle pile. It's not about getting uh, everybody to, uh, to, to run a cheaper version of their code. It's really, it has to be, um, like, this has to be a proven case that the uh, pickle pile serves more than, than, one, uh, than one purpose, one application. Okay, uh, I'm, getting a, uh, I'm getting a bit late, so I'm going to skip over this one. But uh, yeah, basically, uh, why not EVM? Well, the tooling. Uh, and it's closer to uh, to E2. That's uh, the short uh, thing. Um, so I wanted to cover a couple um, uh, examples that are in the works. Uh, so yeah, how would you uh, implement uh, such uh, such uh, uh, a use case, uh, for, and why would you need quick compiles? So uh, yeah, in E2 you have what's called a relayer. Uh, so instead of sending your transaction dir directly to a validator, the equivalent of a miner. What you do is you send uh, them to some kind of full node, and the full node takes uh, all your, um, all your uh, transactions, like gathers all the transactions, pack them into, a, let's say, a mega transaction, or a, a, at least a sub summarizes them, and then sends them to, to the validator or the, the miner in that, uh, in that diagram, and, uh, and that gets included in the block. Um, so what you would do uh, is to create a contract that, whose state is only three things, the root of the account tree, uh, the total token supply, that is not necessary, uh, but it's better. For example, uh, when you go to Etherscan, uh, they tell you, you have this token, this is the total supply. You don't want to be unpacking the tree or you don't want to necessarily be running your entire uh, a full node for each uh, token. So uh, just having an access to the supply uh, would, be, would be useful. And of course, there's a nonth uh, to make sure that you don't uh, replay, do replay a test and things like that. And um, you use the precompile to check the tree. So uh, your, uh, let me show you actually. Uh, oh, right, I have uh, first a slide to, to compare the difference. And I realize there's a big mistake in, in that slide. Um, so here it's, it should be uh, 64, not, uh, not 32. Um, so, normally, if you wrote your uh, your ERC20 token, you've got um, you've got like a map between your address, which is 32 bytes, and, and the value, which is an, also a U256. Uh, here, and I also forgot the nonce, sorry about that. Um, so, if you compare it to the stateless version, you just have the the tree root, you have the total supply, you have the nonce, and so that's uh, 96 bytes against uh, 32 times the number of entry. Uh, sorry, 64 times the number of entry. Um, so if you have a transaction format, uh, you just give the proof of the, the root tree before, the exec before and after execution. You give the address and uh, of the sender and the receiver. You give how much uh, uh, token you want to transfer. And of course, you sign the thing. And the overall algorithm in the contract is you just unpack the, the transaction. And I hope you can read it back. Um, there's, uh, you check the like, signature of the transaction, then you validate that the tree, that the root you are given is the correct one. You validate that the new root is, is the correct one also. You check the balance and you update the new root in the contract state. And the three uh, blocks in green are actually, can be performed by precompile, like the signature check is definitely one that, that is uh, already present. Um, so you can factor this thing, and uh, if you do that, you can support a full, uh, like a, a, a host of, uh, of ERC20. Uh, so there's a clearly a use case for, uh, for, um, for something uh, repetitive. Um, so yeah, like the, the advantage is that you need less storage space, you don't, uh, need to rewrite the ERC20 code every time. Uh, there's a sm small optimization that you could have. If there's a, a difference between what you send and what you receive, that's taken as a reward to the, to the miner, sorry, to the relayer. So this is uh, how you would, uh, how you, you would incentivize uh, relayers to, to, do this, uh, to do this work for you. Um, the problem, of course, is you have currently a lot of state. Uh, that needs to be clarified. How do you extract the state? And more importantly, how do you extract the, um, 
the, the funds. Like if you look at crypto kitty, you could always, uh, yeah, you could burn your kitties somehow, but uh, to, to upgrade to a different model, but the money that is stored in that contract, that is a problem that is still open and needs to be fixed. Uh, yeah, so then I like, I don't have a better name so far, so I call that exception. Um, you can enhance the model I, I provided before with the possibility to add storage and, uh, and contract in your, in your uh, off-chain off tree. Uh, the thing is, it's going to be exp a bit more expensive and complex to do the validation, but uh, if, uh, you can, that also provides you the ability to change the storage model. So right now the state is stored in a, in a big tree, um, like a Merkle Pat uh, Patricia tree. What if you want to, uh, to use a linear storage? Maybe it makes sense, maybe it's going to make things faster. So that's, uh, that's a nice way to upgrade the, the storage model without changing uh, much in the, in the main chain. Um, but uh, yeah, like once again, validation is going to make things a bit more costly and complicated. So it's really interesting if execution rare, rarely happens. Which, uh, uh, yeah, so that was an illustration of what I was uh, talking about. You can have your own on-chain storage, 32 bytes. Then you have the somewhere like you keep uh, the parts you're interested, uh, the parts of the tree you're really interested. So you can prove that uh, you knew the, the like the pre-route. And then uh, you have a, your own storage, so you can uh, you just keep the parts that you need. And if you want, you can. So it's the same thing, except you can change the storage model. You just get a simple list of uh, key values. Um, yeah. So then, uh, out of this, I had a conversation with uh, Yuichi Hirai, who's unfortunately not uh, in Osaka, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, the kudos to him. He came up with an idea. He came up with an idea to uh, to uh, rewrite Raiden in a way that uh, you just create reimbursement contracts. And, um, you also, because it's contracts, you get uh, state channel support. So it's not just tokens, but also uh, more complex execution out of the box. Um, and so when you want to open your channel, you create those two contracts in um, in uh, in a tree that is kept offline. And all you need to do is, uh, well, you, s you sign the proof that uh, the other transaction, uh, sorry, the other update to the tree is correct. And in the end, when you want to close the channel, you just send a proof with the update. The execution happens only once. And, uh, and yeah, so you basically have uh, Raiden uh, without actually using, um, using too much st uh, storage. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to finish on, on this. Uh, the mandatory testnet to announce, of course, I would like to, uh, to try to, to run uh, a testnet uh, before the end of the year uh, with an initial list of precompiles. By the end of next, uh, sorry, to start of next year, I would like to have a fully specified ERC20, a stateless version of ERC20. And uh, hopefully by May next year, sorry, March next year, um, there will be uh, some uh, uh, proper discussions about this on uh, the uh, on core dev calls. Uh, that would be uh, yeah, that would be nice. Um, yes, so that's that was pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, please, uh, if you're interested in that topic, if you're interested to help, if you want to discuss, if you just want to drink a beer as well, uh, call uh, contact me. Uh, I'm available here. Uh, this is my Git on the GitHub slash GitLab handle. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time.